uh, this is where we are stopped we had written an expression for energy of helium atom in terms of the spin orbitals and the Hamiltonian actually I should have written it using uh, powerpoint like I do but then it is too tedious. So, I decided that I should subject you to my bad handwriting at least once sorry about that. Now, let me do something let me try and uh, expand this a little bit not all little bit. So, uh, let me uh, what are we trying to do here we are trying to say what is the role of this spin part of the wave function. We have already given you the answer the expression for energy, but there there was no spin part only the spatial part of the orbital was there. So, I'm, we are going to convince you now that that is ok we can take care of the spin part or rather the spin parts sort of take care of themselves we will see how. Now, here when we expand what will the first term be for the first term I can take this and h 1 and this. So, the first term is going to be something like integral phi 1 alpha 1 phi 1 beta 2 h 1 operating on the same wave function phi 1 alpha 1 phi 1 beta 2 plus there will be more terms we will perhaps write one or two of those. But before that let me try to see and uh, let me try to make sense of this integral. So, remember uh, this integral is uh, really not a single exponent a single integral right. So, what are the parameters here there has to be something in terms of uh, there has to be dr 1 there has to be dr 2 and there has to be uh, d s spin also ok. So, it is actually a triple integral. So, in principle I should be able to separate it out into a product of maybe 3 integrals can we do that let us see. So, first of all I can take the spin part out I hope you, I, you understand what I am talking about this here is really integral 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 whatever we have in terms of d r 1 d r 2 d s I can say. So, I want to write it as integral of the spin part d s multiplied by integral of the r 1 dependent part with respect to d r 1 and integral of the r 2 dependent part d r 2 ok. It is just that we are using bracket notation nothing else. So, uh, we can take the spin part out and write a uh, an integral for itself that will be integral alpha 1 alpha 1 star alpha 1 over all space that is gone because remember what is this phi 1 alpha 1 it is really phi 1 1 alpha 1 that means electron number 1 has alpha spin and resides in spatial orbital phi 1 ok. This has gone out next what do I have? The spatial part also I have coordinates of your uh, well no I mean that is all uh, there is one more not spatial part I have another spin part that is beta 2 yeah beta 2 and beta 1 beta 2 and beta 2 my handwriting is so bad that I myself am getting confused. So, I uh, can blame you for getting confused here sorry about that. Uh, so, b, this is what we are talking about beta 2 and beta 2. So, second integral that comes out is beta 2, beta 2, beta 2 in bra, beta 2 in ket. What remains the special part is phi 1, 1, h 1 operating on phi 1. 1. How did I get this phi 1 1 from here? Let us not forget that what we have written here this phi 1 alpha etcetera these are spin orbitals. So, they are products of a spatial part and a spin part right. So, I have to write 1 in brackets in both ok. So, now just look at these look at these integrals 
spin wave functions are normalized this is equal to 1 this is equal to 1 and this what is this this is equal to i yeah j equal to 1 rj this small j is equal to 1 minus del j square by 2 minus z by rj this is equal to h1 as we have defined and that operates on phi 1j. So, this is basically i1. So, the first term remember we are only writing the first term now first term becomes i1 from here uh, neglecting the uh, uh, we are not really working with the uh, normalization constant we are just working with the remaining wave function that is fine. Okay, so, you see that uh, we are actually getting those integrals which do not contain the spin parts. The spin parts sort of take care of themselves by normalization right uh, normalization that is all. Now what more can we do here let us take uh, something else what is the second integral going to be second integral is going to be uh, say I will take this one minus phi 1 Oh no, what am I writing here? So, we will write here. So, second one will be minus phi 1 alpha 2 phi 1 beta 1 h 1 then I will take this minus. So, minus minus it will become plus and the integral will be something like phi 1 alpha phi 1 alpha 2 phi 1 beta 1 what did I say I will take h 1 or h 2 let us take h 1 h 1 phi 1 alpha 2 phi 1 beta 1. I hope it is not very difficult to see that by similar treatment we are going to get i1 once again right because what do you have you will have phi 1 1 h 1 phi 1 1 the same thing again you have alpha 2 alpha 2 that is 1 beta 1 beta 1 that is 1. So, again you will get i 1 from there ok. So, you see how this expression i 1 comes in this uh, in the expression for in how, how this integral i 1 comes in the expression for energy ok. Now, let me clear this up a little bit. Well, all the terms are there I am just not writing all the terms I am uh, trying to just expand and see what happens. Now, let us take a different combination of terms. We have already written two terms. So, I can write something dot 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 plus dot 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 what we have got i1 i1. Third one let us take this um, let us take h1 and let us take the second term because that also has to be done right a plus b well a minus b into a minus b how much what is it yeah a square minus a b minus b a minus b square that is the kind of thing we are doing here. So, what will that integral be now plus integral alpha phi 1 alpha 1 phi 1 beta 2 h 1 and now I taking the second one. So, see this will not be plus hmm? this will be minus and the second one is phi 1 alpha 2 phi 1 beta 1. Now, let us see if things get more interesting. So, I am not writing the first terms whatever terms are there only this term I will focus on what will happen I can bring out phi 1 phi 1 1 h 1 then phi 1 2 right. 
So, uh, what I get here is well even before going there here we have alpha 1 and here you have beta 1. So, you get alpha 1 you get beta 1 multiply them together and integrate over all space what do you get you get 0 because they are normalized. So, what I am trying to say is that lot of these terms actually become equal to 0 right and then uh, when you go a little further when you expand upon this rij term you are going to get what, what is called this j i i j 1 1 term i equal to j here. So, there is no problem you just can take this j 1 1 right. So, this is how uh, you can expand see just for helium it is so long that we are not having the patience to work it out. So, imagine what it will be for an n electron atom where n is a large number it is going to be huge, but uh, we just demonstrated I hope this demonstration was uh, not confusing for you. You just try to work it out yourself you will be convinced that you will be able to write the expression of energy in terms of these integrals. Okay, for helium what happens? For helium first of all I write this I1. I1. So, uh, I1 plus I2, but I1 plus I2 are one and the same right. So, you can write what expression you get from there and here you will write Kij equal to Jij where well again i and j are 1 1. So, you can write 2 j 1 1 minus j 1 1 that will be 1 j 1 1 and then you can substitute you will get the expression for energy for uh, helium. But the story does not stop here we have learned variational method. So, we know that this expression that we have got now we have to minimize we have to find the minimum value of the energy that we get from this expression right. How do you do that in variation method you just minimize it right and when you minimize you end up getting equations like this you get a Fock operator this is called a Fock operator I will show you the form of Fock operator or maybe I will not I will tell you what Fock operator is made up of if you want to know the form you are welcome to consult Macquarie's book or Pillar's book it is written there well Pillar's book I'm not very sure Macquarie's book definitely. So, f i operating on phi i gives me epsilon i phi i that is the kind of equation that we will get. Okay. So, uh, these f i's are made up of these integrals essentially uh, it is something like uh, an expression analogous to the expression of Hamiltonian, but with the functions in it uh, you just expand it and how many n values are there? There are uh, well 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 up to n i values are there not n right. So, that is the number of orbitals that are there. Okay. Remember we had said that we have n orbitals and uh, we can we uh, can put in maximum of 2 electrons in them. So, we can accommodate 2 uh, electrons in this uh, n number of orbitals. So, what we get then is this this kind of uh, equations using Fock operator for this again this is like an eigenvalue equation Fock operator operating on a wave function gives me back the wave function multiplied by epsilon i I get n number of equations and these are n coupled equations because uh, these wave functions are not really independent of each other are they right they are not. So, what do you do with these n coupled equations? you solve them numerically by using your uh, self consistent field method. What is the initial guess value that you use? The initial guess value that you use is of your uh, linear combination of stator determinants. So, essentially what you do here is that you write this expression get Fock operator. How do you get Fock operator? Uh, fixed Fock operator will also contain these phi's remember. So, it is not a simple differential equation it is exactly well it's very similar to what we have done earlier. So, to generate the Fock operator you need the guess values and the guess values that you get are linear combinations of Slater equations I thought I have read them written below here looks like I did not write sorry about that. So, you start with the Slater determinants start with orbitals start with hydrogen atom orbitals okay. Slater determinants involving hydrogen atom orbitals and construct a the Fock operator. Let the Fock operators operate on the wave functions and write down the n coupled equations solve them numerically using the uh, self consistent field method. Then you get the next set of Fock operator of these wave functions use these wave functions to generate the next generation of Fock operators and then go on until self consistence is obtained 
and once again this becomes a computational problem. Okay. That brings us to uh, an end of the discussion that we wanted to perform and let us not pretend that we have discussed everything that is way beyond the scope of this course. In fact, the course has become much more than what I initially intended it to be. So, we are not going to go into further detail. Let us hope that we will be able to have another NPTEL course on advanced topics in quantum chemistry. If you are successful in that, then we will start from here and talk about more advanced methods because you might remember I told you that a practitioner of quantum chemistry once told me that for him quantum mechanics begins where Hartree Fock ends. But for the purpose of this course, it ends well at least for atoms, it ends where Hartree Fock ends. The reason for doing this discussion in the first place is that we wanted to make certain points which are useful not only for these uh, many electron atoms, but also for uh, molecules. Remember the course is quantum chemistry of atoms and molecules. So, the points that we have made in this discussion are these. First of all, you have to use approximation techniques and the techniques we have learned are perturbation theory techniques and variation methods. Using variation method, you can get upper limits of energies. Using perturbation theory, you can actually do an accurate calculation. If you go to high level, uh, well, higher order perturbation correction terms and provided the perturbation is does not change the system too much from the ideal system. And the problem here is that uh, there has to be a system for which an exact solution of Schrodinger equation must be there. That requirement is not there in variation method that is why it is uh, so popular. But then you cannot do it at one go for most of the systems for initial systems that we tried for systems where we knew the exact solutions we did them at one go. But then gradually we learned that the only way out, the only way to tackle the problem of many electron atoms and systems as complex as these is to resort to uh, iterative techniques. And the techniques that you use are uh, called self consistent field methods in which you guess a wave function, you construct an effective potential using those guess values of wave function, then find uh, the solution of the, that equation because the problem remember even though I am saying it many times I will say it again. The problem with this kind of approach, Hartree Fock approach is that the operator itself contains the function. So, unless you start with some kind of a guess value of function, you uh, cannot really get going. Right? So, uh, to get going we give some guess value and that guess value or that guess cannot be any guess some uh, sort of sense has to be there in the guess, but eventually we have learned that we do not have to stick to the exact solutions at all, we can take anything. So, Gaussian uh, exponential many things, we talked about different kinds of orbitals and finally, what we have uh, shown you very sketchily is that by using this kind of SCF calculation using Hartree Fock method, using variational method, one can get, uh, one can try and solve we get energy values for complex many atom systems. What I am not going to say, but I request you to read from Macquarie's quantum chemistry book or Prasad's book or Chandra's book, any book that you like is what we have actually studied in class 11, 12. Remember uh, for many electron atoms, we had talked about variation of ionization energy, sawtooth variation. We had talked about uh, uh, variation of electronegativity so on and so forth. Actually, when you do this kind of a an SCF calculation, you get results by which you can get very, very close to the experimental values. So, this sawtooth variation where you see signatures of this main shell and sub shell that can be uh, actually modeled very nicely using Hartree Fock method uh, SCF calculations. So, I would like you to read that part because that is just story more of a story than what the story I have told you over the last two modules. So, please read those by yourselves and uh, refresh your memories and also understand to a little better extent I hope, I hope why you get that kind of a trend for many electron atom. We are not going to discuss that explicitly here. Okay? That brings us uh, to an end of this part of the discussion, that brings us to an end of the discussion of atoms. But the concepts that we have generated here, exchange integral. Uh, 
Coulomb integral ok uh, and remember something called S integral of phi i phi j over all space. All these integrals are going to come handy in the subsequent discussion that we are now going to perform on quantum chemistry of molecules and there we are going to talk about two approaches balance bond theory molecular orbital theory. I suspect all of you have heard of all this it is just that we hope that we will be able to take our understanding to like one notch higher not complete but one notch higher than whatever it is at the moment right. So, next day we start talking about uh, quantum chemistry of molecules. Thank you.